The second march against gun violence was held this morning in Harrisburg. The Harrisburg police chief is speaking out about last week's shootout on Market Street. We counted 45 bullet casings. This is a residential neighborhood. There were kids outside at the time. It could be something petty going on up the street and a stray bullet come flying down. We are in the midst of a rash of gun violence in the city. The shooting happened Sunday morning in broad daylight. It's the second homicide in the city in four days. The first homicide on Thursday, the victim was only 17 years old. What Harrisburg is saying is that there is no reason for a juvenile to be walking down the city streets of Harrisburg unsupervised carrying a handgun. Stop gun violence! Stop gun violence! Stop. I seen some shit in my life that got me traumatized. Nothing else but more to see on the cry. Yeah, boy, it was down with shit in his eyes. Now his body is cold, so in the sky. And now his brother is gone, he gotta keep a gun. And said, Mommy, you tweak and I gotta keep me warm. And yeah, I'm up in this now before they get me done. And no I'm laying them down before they run You were supposed to be my homie and you tried to get me killed You can't trust everybody that's with you when you out here in the field They can have on your jersey and still try to get you pilled That's why a nigga gotta keep it non-concealed Yeah, that's why niggas be out here, they be popping pills Man, sometimes a nigga really just ain't trying to feel And think about all that shit, yeah, it really hurt my spirit And when my nigga died, I ain't really wanna hear it Hate that you had to go for me to go and get it Upgraded to the foreign, I'ma move in the city I'ma be a boss to finish it, where the Percy ain't no limit And all this shit was iron, none of it was ever given I seen some shit in my life, they got me traumatized Nothing else but more than see him on the car Yeah, boy, it was down, shit in his eyes Now his body is cold, so in the sky And now his brother is gone, he gotta keep it going And said, mommy, you tweak and I gotta keep you on And yeah, I'm up in this now before they get me done And all I'm laying them down My name is Sandra Jackson. I am the grandmother of Chance Quader King Henderson, who was murdered April the 1st, 2021. The investigation continues into a homicide that left a 16-year-old boy dead today in Allison Hill. This happened in the 2200 block of Barry Hill Street, and our Samantha York visited that scene and heard from the Harrisburg police today. So far this year, we have experienced our fourth homicide in the city. Pausing for a Thank moment you. of silence for the lives lost in homicide cases this year, the Harrisburg Police Department says it is actively investigating a homicide on Berry Hill Street Thursday morning that left a 16-year-old boy dead. His name has not yet been released by police, but the boy's aunt, brother, and other family members are memorializing him just down the street from where he lived and where he lost his life. I never would imagine. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> Chance was 15 years ago, was a crying baby. He was a crybaby. He was a crybaby. So I would have never imagined that we would be speaking in him as past tense. But 15, 20 years ago, I felt safe in Harrisburg. I felt safe in Harrisburg. 
all my family was here, other than the fact that I lost my brother to um, the cops killed him on September 14th, 1998. Other than that, I felt safe here. Let me get on the Snapchat with it, bro. You want to get on Snapchat so bad, now you don't want to say nothing. <laughs> the crazy thing is, is that Starting in December, my daughter started saying to me, which is Charlotte King, Chance's mother, Mom, I got to get my boys out of here. Chance has an older brother by my my daughter, Charlotte King. Um, his name is Eric. And uh, she was worried about Eric and Chance. And she just would say, Mom, I got to get my boys out of here. I got to get my boys out of here. So the day before Chance was killed, she called me and she said, Mom, I reserved the U-Haul for July. Are you going to drive the U-Haul? I was like, no, girl, you know I can't drive no no U-Haul. But I immediately called her back and I said, before I do a fast no, let me say a slow maybe. Because I can take that time for us to spend time together. Because by them moving so far away, I don't know when the next time will be that we will be able to be together. And the next day, he was killed. He was killed. So, you know, I just don't wanna be here anymore. I worry about my grandson, Eric, because Eric and Chance was like this here. I worry for him, and I have another grandson. I'm afraid. I'm afraid. I'm afraid. Yeah. <laughs> Two more months. She prayed. She gave her boys his life to God, and he didn't. He didn't give her the chance. <laughs>
My name is Patty Kim. I'm the state representative for the 103rd District, which includes the city of Harrisburg. I've been in Harrisburg for 21 years now. So I've seen some, a lot of good things in Harrisburg recently, and then a lot of things that are not so good. Um, when I first came into the city and representing the city, you know, downtown was on the go and Restaurant Row was picking up and we were starting to get more development that would spread out more um, past downtown. But we've had our issues with, since I've been here 21 years ago, you know, the school district has always had its challenges. Um, politics is politics, can get dirty. Um, but the same, I think, calls for the youth have been uh, better but not good enough. Um, I've heard people say, you know, we need more programs for the kids, and I've seen a lot of good people step up and provide those programs, but, you know, there's always, you know, more funding that's needed to make these programs really, you know, stand out and, and help the kids. Um, so I'd say some parts have been better and then other parts have been worse, and yeah. And right now, Patty Kim called an action plan, asked people to come out and support the school and make sure our children are safe, receive them, uh, let them know that we're not going to tolerate any shooting in our city, we're not going to tolerate them and interfering with their education, we're going to provide a safe and decent environment for them. Well, that says that there's a problem, that says that people want a solution, and people understand that our, con our community is in a bad condition. And uh, fortunately for us, one of the things we do in our curriculum is we teach our children the reality of our community, teach them how to resolve conflict, and why they should stay away from guns, and how to deal with it. So our students are prepared, however, when it actually happens, it's, it's shocking and they had to go through some anxiety and some grief process, but they worked through it. And our students understand that this is part of life and they have to overcome it and they have to keep moving on. But our, our people here, this shows some strength in our community and some support, and that's what we need. You know, if the police officers cannot secure us, which they're paid to do, then it's, it, if the uh, burden of responsibility falls on the community members who live here. So we should come out. But it's the community members that really need to stand up and take back our streets. My name is Kyle Gouch. I am employed by the Harrisburg City Police Department. I'm a lieutenant and I'm a supervisor in the Criminal Investigations Division, uh, again, typically known as the Detective Division. I think a lot of times we have a, a disconnect um, with some of the, the community and I think unfortunately there is that stigmatism about the, uh, the snitching and the uh, talking to the police. Um, as a supervisor up in the detective division, I, I can assure you that there's nobody who wants to solve these cases besides the victims' families more than the detectives that are assigned these cases. Um, they all take a personal interest in their cases and they all, you know, it, I mean, we sit there in the room with the victims' families and uh, we see the, the pain that they're going through. We hear the emotion in their voice. We see the emotion on their face. And you know, we know that the only thing that we can do, realistically, the only thing we can do to try to soften that or to try to bring them some sort of you know, hope or you know, a feeling of resolution is to hold the person accountable. So uh, you know, it's, it's not for a lack of effort, I can assure you, um, from the detectives. But I think Unfortunately, there's a lack of cooperation, and it's not necessarily with the citizens or the uh, the community. Um, there's some amazing people in the city of Harrisburg that step up and they want to help. But you know, at the end of the day, the laws are the laws, and if you don't have information on a homicide, you don't inf have information on a shooting. Uh, if you're just hearing it from the street and you call in and tell us, that's that's great. I mean, that gives us uh, a direction to go down. But at the end of the day, we need people that were there, that witnessed it, and that are willing to cooperate and to go to court. Um, you know, I've said it before, if, if you're not willing to, uh, to go to court and, and uh, you know, sit there and you know, look at the accuser, it makes it much more difficult for us, unless we have video evidence, physical evidence, DNA evidence. Um, there's, there's other, obviously, options that we have or other avenues that we always, we always look at. But uh, at the end of the day, uh, eyewitnesses that are willing to cooperate, credible eyewitnesses willing to cooperate and willing to step up and say, enough is enough. You know, I, I saw an unfortunate you know, act and I saw a young man or young woman lose their life and it's not tolerable. I'm not going to allow this person to you know, continue down the path they're going on and potentially take another person's life.
Enough is enough. Governor Tom Wolf said we need to put an end to gun violence and these mass shootings we hear about all too often. He said today marks a step in the right direction. We need to do something to stop gun violence all across Pennsylvania. Too many Pennsylvanians have died from gun violence. Too many have lost loved ones to gun violence. Too many live every day in fear. Governor Tom Wolf made it official and signed an executive order today in Harrisburg. He was joined by several local and state lawmakers, all with one goal in mind, keeping Pennsylvanians out of harm's way. The order will put programs in place to curb gun violence throughout the Commonwealth. I think it's gotten worse in the last five years and since I've been here for two decades now I'm you know starting to know the, the kids who have passed and their families and just getting a uh, front row seat of what happens when a child is murdered um, for example for Jason or Jay you know my interactions with him was maybe I had maybe three or four interactions with him, and they've all been incredibly positive. Jason, more affectionately known as Jay, had that it factor. He was the John Harris class president. He was homecoming king. He was an honor roll student known to randomly show up in school in a full suit and tie. And although he is now a victim, the way his life ended is not how he'll be remembered in this community. I interacted with him because he was part of SBI the leadership program for uh, Harrisburg High School, and he helped me um, volunteer some things that I needed to get done. And I saw him there, and then I saw him again, he, rep he represented the program, he asked for a donation, great. And then I was a judge for the homecoming cor coronation, where I helped judge, and he became king, you know, his senior year, and just saw how, you know, the, the audience went wild, and you know, everyone loved him, uh, and the cute part about Jason was that he was so shy, you know, he was so talented, but he had this shyness, you know, when he asked me for a donation, you know, he was, I could tell it was very painful him for him to come up to me. And to be able uh, to see him in that light and then read in the paper that he, he's gone, that he's gone. And I, can, I know that the community knows that if it could happen to him, somebody who was going places, who was doing all the right things, then it could happen to me. Everything starts with an idea. It starts with a vision, then you gotta chase your vision, you gotta make your vision happen. And when you do that, then that's when you, that's success. You chase your vision, you make it happen. It's called success. My name's Terry Whelan, I'm a captain. I run the Criminal Investigation Division with the Harrisburg City Bureau of Police. The, the, the cold hard reality of it is that sometimes we can solve a case quickly and, and sometimes we can't. That's very unfortunate. Um, it, it's tough to, for, for our detectives to solve some of these cases and they, and they carry that. You know, if you, if you give somebody a job to do in the form of a, of a homicide investigation in this case and they're not able to put a lid on it and, and get some closure for the family, Regardless of what people may think, our detectives carry that because it is a, it is a burden that they have, and I've seen cases solved within you know an hour, and then I also have unfortunately several open cases as well, um, and a lot of it depends on on cooperation from witnesses. Sometimes, if you have a homicide, obviously the victim's not going to cooperate a whole lot, but if you have a shooting, for instance, sometimes we get victims that are all shot up and they don't even want to cooperate. How do you answer that? And we've had people that 
that told us they know exactly what happened, but it's the police's job to figure it out, so they're not saying anything. A deadly weekend in Harrisburg. Two separate homicides within 48 hours. Harrisburg reporter Portia Johnson is live from the scene of last night's shooting. Yes, we're uh, at the Hall Manor neighborhood where you can see the crowd behind me surrounding the memorial for Malik Mundy. Uh, we have watched this memorial grow quickly within the past several hours. Police say 20 year old Malik Mundy was gunned down outside Row 31 in Hall Manor. Shaquila Bate lives nearby. Never would have even have thought this would have happened to Malik. Police are still looking into what led up to the shooting. Lisa Clark says whatever it was, it wasn't worth Malik's life. Just fight about it. I'm saying you don't have to use guns or whatever. I'm saying you live to fight another day. Clark says she knows Malik's mom. She lost another, a son a year ago to, uh, to the streets. You know, and I know as a mother, that's something hard to take. It's something hard for many. That's why Bate is trying to focus on the good times. To know him is to love him. Hi, my name is Cheryl Hughes. I lost two sons to gun violence. My son's name is Charles Tate, nicknamed Neuters, September 13, 2014. I lost my son Malik Mundy, May the 10th, 2015, on Mother's Day. Today, my baby, 30th birthday. Neuters. I love you, baby. I miss you, baby. I want my son back. I want my baby back. They did this to us. They crumbled my little heart up. Neuters. Neuters, that's dance fever. That was my baby, my titty head. That was my dance fever. Everybody loved neuters and everybody knew it. September the 13th, 2014. It was a nice day outside. Um, my son, neuters, he came to see me. I was living uptown Harrisburg at the time. He came and see me with this gentleman that I didn't like. He, I mean, it, he just rubbed me the wrong way. You know, in reality, he wasn't good for my son. So I had my talks. I had my talks with my son because I'm a single mother raising six kids by myself. I was once the streets, you understand? So I know the streets. So I did the streets. So my kids didn't have to do the streets. They all I got, and I'm all they had. So, my mom, she uh, you know, the type of mom that's on go for her kids. She don't play about us. She um, she she tried her best, you know, keeping that lifestyle from us that she had to go through as a single mom. But as we got older, you know, we seen, you know, different things of what we was taught so it was it, it moved them a little different they led me back to see my son he's laying on that table and I tried to get him up wasn't moving. They killed my son Neuter, 9, 13, 14. 
Eight months later, they killed my, my son Malik. Five, 10, 15, Mother's Day. We was all together Mother's Day. My sister had a cookout Mother's Day. I went home because I kept getting a headache. Same headache I got with Neuter. Didn't know my headache was gonna be my son's getting killed. Big headache, not in my head, in my neck, back of my neck, a headache. So I took Malik, I got a picture with my son yelling to me, call his mouth saying, mom. And I told him I had to go home because I wasn't feeling good. Later on that night, they called me again, second phone call. My son dead in the streets. <sighs> They couldn't, they knocked at the door, I couldn't get up, and uh, my friend came through my window, and I, I'm like, I just look. She was like, you gotta get up. She said they saying something about your brother. And I just got up, drove out the south, and A family in pain after finding out their 20-year-old son and nephew, Malik Mundy, is the latest victim of gun violence in Harrisburg. Police got the call for a shooting just before midnight in row 32 of the Hall Manor section of Harrisburg. When they got on scene, they found the victim suffering from at least one gunshot wound laying out on the sidewalk. He was pronounced dead on the scene. Family, friends, and onlookers began gathering, hopeful the news wasn't true. But after being let into the crime scene by police, their worst fears were realized. This is the second tragedy this family has faced in less than a year. According to two family members, Malik Mundy's older brother, Charles Tate Jr., was shot and killed in September at 14th and Kittatinny Streets. About a month later, a person was arrested and charged with the homicide. Harrisburg police continue to work this homicide scene, working to gather clues, conduct interviews, and figure out what led up to this latest shooting and death in Pennsylvania's capital city. Since they killed both of my sons, Since they killed both of my sons, this is what life's been for me. This is what life been for me. This right here. Yeah, my son was in the streets. He was. And I tried to stop him. But my son wasn't a bad kid and everybody know my kid. Know this. My son did anything to anybody. I chastised my kids. They took my kids from me. It's not fair to me. I need everyone that I know, everyone, everyone that knows what happened. I have a young lady that took pictures of my son dead on the ground. Wasn't no cops, wasn't no tape. Crime scene tape up, wasn't no paramedics, nothing there. This girl brought these pictures to my house. The next day, after they killed my son, showed me them pictures. Never gave them to me. She said she was. The reason why, a picture tells a thousand stories. And she know, that picture told a thousand stories and she won't give them to me. That was her child. I would have been gave them to her. I would have been gave them pictures to her. I wouldn't have did her like this. And you know what happened to my child. You got the pictures. Nobody's there but you on the camera. My son's body. What was his last words? How long was you there? Cause you been able to save my son? Why didn't you call the paramedics? Why was you just standing there taking pictures? She knows, my son knows, which he can't talk right now, and God knows. I need justice for my baby, Malik, Monday.
I am Joanna Housie, and I am Jawan Washington's mother, and he was murdered on March 24th of 2018. Juwan, that was my baby. He was my funny kid. I got a shirt made for him that it is him. He was my jokester. He joked about everything. Everything was funny to him, and I think he got it from me. But and he was very adventurous. He did everything. He rode dirt bikes up the middle of the street with Donna Willie. He just didn't have a fear in him. So that's why he was my adventurous kid. And he was witty. He didn't care about things. He just did what he wanted to do and lived life. And he was my all-star. He was an MVP in all of his sports. Basketball, baseball, even football. When he won his MVP for football, when I tell you that was the most proudest moment as a parent to go up against all of those boys, and he made top of it. Basketball. He was a little kid, probably 10. They wanted him at the big boys at 12 to play. And every time I'd be like, can't do both, baby. But he did, because he was my kid that just was there. And the end is for never forgotten. Because nobody will ever forget him. He just was fun. He loved everybody. He didn't, I'd put him in Susquehanna, but he was raised on the hill, uptown, out the south. Everybody knew him. And I found that out when my baby was killed, that he grew up everywhere. He wasn't, I'm a hill boy. He was everywhere. And he was very well known. And I never knew that. And it was his smile. It lit up the room in his goofy laugh. That was Jawan, my laughter baby. He he still loves the Fast and the Furious and all of his fast cars because he always wanted a Maybach. That's Jawan. I last see my son at 20, but it was barely, he was killed, not even 24 minutes after his 20th birthday. Yes, well, police say they're looking for 42-year-old Charles Williams. They say that surveillance video helped to identify the suspect. They believe Williams is responsible for killing 20-year-old Jawan Washington. Police say several shots were fired outside Double D's bar on South 19th Street Saturday morning. They say Washington was found lying in the parking lot outside of the bar. Police say a second man was shot and taken to the hospital and is in critical condition. There were a lot of people out there uh, when this happened. Most of the people were unaware that it occurred. It was going to occur until it actually happened. Uh, there was some chaos and mayhem there because everyone's trying to get to safety uh, because no one knew where it was actually coming from. Again, police are looking for 42-year-old Charles Williams in connection with the murder over the weekend. Reporting live in Harrisburg, Portia Johnson, WGAL News 8. It was March 23rd, which is the day I gave birth to him. And about 12 o'clock midnight, maybe 12, 15-ish, I got a phone call from my nephew. And he said, Aunt Joe, you need to go to the bar and check on Joan. And I said, what? Now I have an older son. Not that I push any harm on my other child, but you don't expect me to get a call about my baby. So I would go to the bar and it's all taped off. And Joan had a car, but Joan was do whatever he wanted to do, like I said. So I didn't know what his car looked like or what I'm looking for. And that really wasn't the point of me looking. I'm looking for him. The cops were so, un, excuse my language, fucking helpful. 
they just didn't care about me as a mother to find out that was my child or nothing, but that's another story. But I got the call and I went to the hospital and I called my mom and everybody was in the hospital so I knew it was my baby. I knew it was my baby and I didn't want to believe it. And my the doctors came out and they told me my baby was gone. And it was over from there. It was over. Like I felt like I lost my life. I remember everybody in the room and I'm like, get out. Like, I'm not sure. They were just the people that brought him to the hospital. But it was, I don't even remember anything else. I just remember being admitted to the hospital. And so I think I was in a coma ever since. And it took me a long time to get over to even tell you this. And that is the hardest moment that a mother ever, ever, she gets a phone call saying that her son was killed. I was very fortunate because my son's murder was on video, which I had to watch that, and I don't think any mother would ever want to watch their kid be killed. So that right there is a pain of its own. But as far as justice, being a mother that got justice, it helped, but it's never gonna go away. I know he's gone and he's off the streets so and he can never harm anybody else. And that's the only feeling that makes me feel like I got justice. But I didn't because my baby still is never gonna come back to me, never. So it's, not to grieve on the importance, but grieve on your importance and not saying that's not important, but it just doesn't feel, it's, guys, it feels about 5% better. I'm going to keep it real. 95% of me, my baby's still never coming back. Yeah, 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 get in this book. Hey, Bree, take him back to the day, Bree. Someone told me, and I don't know if that's 100% true, but they said my son's last words were, tell my mom I love her. So I keep that in my heart with me, and that's exactly what I would tell my son, mommy loves you. I'm Tom Cook from Michael's Memory, PUSH. And Michael's Memory stands for the things that we're trying to do together in the community, which I started by my brother passing away. Unity. There has been a division for too long. If we push as a unit, there is no one that can stop us. We've been faced with hard times, but if we don't work together, there will be harder times ahead of us. If you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. So we gotta push through the stress, push through the pain, push through the worries, push through the heartache, push through the hate, and push each other and our neighbors in a better direction. We stand together as one. There will be no weak links so the one who intentions aren't in the right place will not be able to penetrate our ranks. We cannot be blind to everything that's going on around us. Death, poverty, killing each other over nothing, 
Because if we are blind and our youth has no vision, then that's the blind leading the blind. Let's be the guidance they need and lead by taking action. Our people will follow us. This is so much bigger than black and white. So let's push. My brother was my best friend first and foremost. Same mother, same father. The only one of my brothers that we had the same mother, same father. He was always into, you know, he was ahead of his time. And Mike, he was always into making people smile. He was against bullying. He was against all that. And when you came around him, you was going to smile. You left him some type of way. So when my brother passed away by a gunshot wound of, to a, lost by a friend of his, it hurt, you know what I mean? And I was one of the main ones that was out here doing, running around, shooting, doing all the negativity. So it's kind of like, you got to put that back into doing something. The only thing that makes me feel better now is to doing things that he used to do to others to make them smile. So I try to push that on to the next person. Just like with push, I try to bring the communities together so that we're able to do something together and not always be separated because I know by passing on, like what my brother used to do for others and make them feel good, if I pass that on, then I know he's still getting rewarded while he's in the grave because that's what I believe. Good deeds going to follow you and I. If I'm passing that on by his good deeds, I'm pretty sure he get rewarded from it. So I just try to bring the community together like that, man, do for our youth. What's that leader? That's right. So the things on this picture that we're painting that says leaders, powerful, intelligent, empower, ambitious, and focused. We're going to speak on being a leader first. Now us as leaders, as men, like, you know, so-called gangsters, we're not doing enough. We're not giving back enough. We're not getting out here doing positive events and letting it be known that this is what it's all about. It's not about all that overrated stuff. You, you go to jail or oh, make you tough. Nah, that man, that make you weak. Don't nobody want to be away from the family. So I believe that it's on us, man. We got to get out here. We got to do perform. We got to do more deeds. We got to do more good things for these kids. We got to do more positive events and show them we got to lead by example rather than just telling them all the time. I love seeing the community um, speak out more and um, talk about what they need and then having groups come together for their own organizations. I see a lot of people who come from prison, the ex-offenders, and then say, you know what, I didn't have X, Y, and Z. I want to provide that for our kids so that they don't have to go experience what I, what I have. And to see their passion has been amazing. And I can name off a lot of, you know, different organizations from Kevin Dolphin to basketball organizations where they have midnight basketball just to keep the kids um, active, um, I think has been really encouraging. And um, we need more of that. But to have men stand up and say, you know what, I'm going to reach out and help these kids, even though they're not mine, so that they can have a, a better chance at, at making, making it in life. My name is Monica Gallman Hill. My son was Rashad Gallman. Rashad was murdered on 11-27 of 2015. Mm. pregnant with Rashad at a very young age. Um, I was 15 years old when I um, got pregnant with Rashad. Um, life was not easy for Rashad and I um, being a very young teenage mom. Um, there was good times and bad times um, in Harrisburg at that time, but more so I would say the good. Rashad was uh, very bubbly. 
Um, he took nothing in life serious. His character was always, he felt as though he had to always laugh and joke about everything because life had so much other things going on. And his way of getting through it was to smile through it, always. At a very young age, um, I want to say maybe about 14 or 15, Rashad start getting into trouble. Um, being a teenage boy in Harrisburg, wanting to follow, you know, what he's seen the other boys doing. Um, he started, you know, getting into playing with guns and being on street corners and being different places that he knew he shouldn't have been. He was angry. Um, he didn't have his biological father in his life. So that alone brought some anger to his lifestyle um, to where he felt he was very rebellious and wanting to lash out for all the negative reasons of not having his father present. He was missing something from his father not being involved. So the only thing we could really do at that point was to try to keep him involved in sports. He traveled, he played AAU basketball, um, he played in several different leagues at the Camp Curtin YMCA every Thursday, Saturday. Um, he was very involved with sports, however, sooner or later, his attention got shifted over to the streets. Hi, Susan. Police say one shooter is still on the loose today after those two homicides Friday. And the Harrisburg Police Department had to bring in extra officers during the holiday weekend just to deal with all the violence here. One victim, 25-year-old Rayon Braxton, was found dead in a warehouse on the 300 block of Carlisle Street Friday night. The business the victim owned there on the third floor was not open at the time, but police say he was shot several times. One hour before that, though, Braxton, before Braxton's death, police say 15-year-old Jaswan Johnson shot and killed Rashad Galman Queen, who was riding in a car that was on North 5th and Radnor Streets. The driver of that car took the victim to the hospital, we're told, where the victim died. But police say it was the 15-year-old's parents who turned him into police. On the day of uh, November the 27th, 2015, um, the day my son was murdered, um, I was home getting dressed, um, getting ready to visit William Howard Day Cemetery um, to place an angel on a tree for my grandmother. And in the process of that, we left the house. We came back from the cemetery. Um, I came back to get some money so that I can go to Lowe's to get a Santa Claus um, for the roof of the house. And uh, Rashad followed me around the house, um, asking me, can I take him to Sneaker Villa? It was Black Friday. Everybody knows that. Um, everyone shops continuously on Black Friday. Me and my best friend, we do it every year. And he followed her around. He followed me around continuously asking um, if we can take him to Sneaker Villa because his birthday was actually the next day, November the 28th. Um, in the midst of us leaving the house, uh, somehow or another, Rashad had called his girlfriend to get a ride, and she wasn't able to pick him up at that time. So he called a friend to get a ride to the sneaker store. I kept telling Rashad, just give me a second. I'll make sure you get to Sneaker Villa to get the sneakers that you want to get to wear out for your birthday tomorrow. Unfortunately, he didn't wait for me. Um, I came back to the house. Um to see if the mailman came and Rashad, there was no signs of Rashad. I didn't know where he went. Um, he had only must have been gone out of my space for 30 minutes at the most. Um, as I circled the block to uh, get the children, we were picking uh, my son and my godchildren up from my aunt. I stopped and I talked to one of my neighbors around the corner on Wisconisco Street. And at the time, that of the conversation I heard some gunshots erupt and I stopped and it wasn't nothing that was abnormal because you hear gunshots in the city all the time however this time I felt it in my gut like something wasn't right 
we went on and proceeded to get to Lowe's so we can get the Santa Claus to put on the roof of the house for my granddaughter. And I got a call from his aunt stating that uh, Rashad had been shot and I needed to get to Harrisburg Hospital immediately. When I got to the hospital, um, they told me they were working on him when I initially got to the hospital. Um, the doctor then came out and said that uh, he was working on him and if I could give them some time. And a few minutes later, he came back out and said that uh, he had done all he could to to help Rashad. What's up, shit, boy, young chop, train, C-O-E-R, uh-huh. Yeah, my rap game is cold, your rap game is shitty. You don't want it, cause young chop be blowing 150. Niggas, y'all lame, just step back. That 40 hit your brains while you land her flat, yeah. You niggas don't want that. Y'all's back there. I'm Chanel Baltimore, the mother of Hassan, Kiran Baltimore Green, a.k.a. Choppy. He was murdered January 18th, 2014. I had Choppy November 30th, 1995. Um, I was 19 years old, his father and I, Hassan Green Jr. Life was great. I was happy. I had my first son. It was just beautiful. And when that young man was born, he was born with a smile on his face, <laughs> all gums. Um, and then through the years, watching him grow, he just was happy, always smiling, uh, very protective of his brother, cousins, friends. He just was happy and he wanted to embrace everybody, um, loved to dance, <laughs> uh, loved to rap because he knew his dad used to rap. So he loved music and he loved to rap. <laughs> he played too much. Um, he was outgoing. He always had a smile on his face. Um, he definitely turned my frowns upside down most of the time. Um, he was a consoling person. Um, <laughs> he was just there. He was a backbone. Um, he was a best friend. He was everything. Choppy played basketball, played uh, baseball. Got to high school, um, never grade year. He wanted to play football. He wanted to be on the football team. Choppy started smoking weed. <laughs> um, he got caught one time down in Stilton, abandoned building. And the cops had arrested him. Uh, he went to court got on probation and everything. Uh, choppy authority was not choppy state. Um, he was angry. You know, you have to abide by certain rules when you're on probation, whether it's juvenile or adult. And, um, you know, choppy would do the right thing, but then when he wanted to have it his way, he wanted to have it his way and he 
you know, he didn't care about anything else, which kept him in the system, you know, and it was made, Choppy was real close with his dad. So, you know, as teenagers, teenage parents, you know, we make bad decisions. Nobody's perfect. Um, his dad got incarcerated. And, you know, he wasn't really seeing his dad like that. His dad didn't want to see him, want, want his son to see him in jail. So his dad would do his time and then he came home and he would be with Choppy. And that's all Choppy cared about. For real, his dad, me, his dad, his grandma, Nana, and his brother. He just wanted to be around his dad. So when he couldn't be around his dad, he would display bad behavior. Family and friends are mourning the death of Hassan Baltimore Green Jr. He was shot on the front porch of a home Saturday night in the first block of North 16th Street. Officers responded to the area for a report of shots fired. Uh, within a minute or two after receiving the call, they arrived on scene as a young man that was shot. Officers tell us Baltimore Green was taken to Harrisburg Hospital, where he died, making him the victim in the city's first homicide of 2014. This following 16 shooting deaths in the city last year, according to Heating God's Call. A neighbor we talked to, who asked to remain anonymous, says it's another violent act in a violent community. And it's sad. I live right there on the second floor. You know, and these kids, they shoot guns like it could have been my six-year-old. That same resident saying once he heard the shots, he ran over to the porch. That could have been one of my kids. I just wanted to make sure that he was all right. Green was a student at Steelton High Spire High School. Today, Mayor Eric Pappenfuss expressed his condolences to the family. Releasing this statement, saying, We share the pain of the family in the death of this young man and call upon our city to support them in their grief. We must find a way to stop the violence that is claiming too many of our young people. If we work together, we can save our children and stop the violence that is claiming far too many young lives. It was a Friday, I do believe. Seen my sons out to South out Hall Manor, South Side. Uh, gave him some money. He said, Mom, I'm going to the studio. I said, okay. My other son said he was going to the movies. I said, okay. I had picked my nieces up from my best friend's house Wednesday. Cuff. Picked them up and I dropped them off at the mall. Choppy's dad called me, and me and Hassan was on the phone. So I was going home down High Spire, take me a shower and get dressed. Me and his dad still on the phone the whole time. I'm getting dressed and everything. So it's about 10, 10 o'clock, 10, 15 p.m., which I know like the movies is probably, they get ready to end. I was just waiting on Either my sons or my nieces, one of them to call me to tell me to come get them. We were sitting there having a good time and all of that. Um, we seen Trey leave in the middle of the movie. We wasn't sure what was going on though. Um, so um, at the end of the movie, we came out and we realized our phones were going off and everything. Um, um, this number had popped up on my phone and I was just looking at it and he was like, Hassan, he was like, you all right, everything all right? I was like, I don't know this number that keep calling my phone. And he was like, well, why don't you answer it? It might be, you know, one of the kids, maybe their phone died. And I told Hassan to hold on. When I answered the phone, it was my uh, son, Trey, screaming out. Um, he screamed out, Mom, get to 16th and Park. Somebody shot Chop. And I said, what? And he hung up. So 
and all the phone automatically clicked over to Big House on. And I told him, and he's like, what? What? And I was like, I'm on my way. I said, um, I said, I gotta go. I gotta call and find out what's going on. Uh, I called my niece's mother, Alicia Easter. I said, Lee, could you go over to 16th and Park? To, they said Choppy got shot. She's snapping and asking me all these questions, but I can't tell her nothing because I don't know. I'm in traffic trying to hurry up and get over there, but I knew she was closer because she lived at between 18th and 19th in Chestnut. So, uh, Hassan called me back and said, where should I go? And I told him to hold on because my line clicked. It was Alicia. And she said, sis, go to Harrisburg Hospital. They got Choppy in the ambulance. So I jumped on the highway and I flew to Harrisburg. I had to do about 80 to 100. Um, once I got downtown to the Harrisburg Hospital in part, my whole body was trembling and shaking. When I walked down into the emergency room, there was two ladies there. And um, I walked up to the window and I was like, uh, do you have a Hassan Green here? Did you bring a Hassan Green in? They said my son got shot at 16th and Park. I get on Facebook and I start seeing RIP. Then I start seeing pull it through. Once I walked back in, the lady opened up a room door and she said, could you go in there and sit down? Somebody will be out to talk to you. So I'm like, okay. Um, Alicia Easter came in there and then Choppy's dad came. Uh, once Choppy's dad came, uh, the doctor came out, and then that's when he told me that um, Hassan had got shot in uh, the back one time, and it hit his lung. Uh, he bled internally, and that Choppy didn't make it. Everything just seemed like a, like a dream. Like, no, nah, not my son, not my son, no, nope. I messed up. Seven years later, I don't know if I changed. Uh, it, not, I, it changed me for, I don't know if it changed me for the best. I don't know. Just talking about him, I'm great. It just hurts. It hurts. You took my first child away. You took my first love from me. And I just want to know why. What did he do? And I miss his voice. I miss him. I miss him just saying, Mom. Hearing his deep voice. Mom, Mom. you okay? Shawana Plummer. My son is Tajarel Curry. He was shot March 10th, 
and he passed away March 11th, early morning. I never had any issues or problems with him. He was a typical boy, but never. He always laid back, humble. Um, he didn't like to go out. Most of the friends used to come to our house, so that's what I like. Um, his friends used to come and be like, let's go to a party. And he was like, no, y'all could come back after I'm done. He stayed in the house. So, and he was just a good kid. He never, never liked arguing, but when he got married, you could tell. But he was just one of them kids that, you know, everybody liked. Um, that's very, very humble. I did everything I can to make sure he wasn't in the street and he had what he had. So, I think I did a pretty good job. It was March, it was a Thursday, March 10th, and I came home from work. He was there, and I usually go to happy hour with some co-workers after work, so, and I didn't go, so Ty was like, Mom, ain't you going to happy hour? And I was like, no. So he was like, yeah, you are. And I, I have a little one, Tristan. He was like, I got Tristan, and he gave me money to go and I was like oh okay so I went to Rookie's and um, he was there and I got home back home around like 7 o'clock but I called before I left and I said do you want something to eat he was like yeah so I brought his stuff so I got home and him and his he had two other he had two friends they was downstairs playing a game so I told him um your food's here do you want it in the microwave so I put it in the microwave and then I told him to move his car because it was street cleaning the next day. So he was like, you could do it. Then he um, was about to go back downstairs to play his game. He gave me a hug and he was like, we we going to be good. And I was like, I know. And then I went upstairs. So the two boys that was there, I told them, Yo, you know, go have fun. Go back. They was playing a game. So I went upstairs and I was on the phone with my friend. Um, Around like nine, ten o'clock, I heard um, gunshots. So I told her, so my friends like, "Well, I'll call you back. It's shooting outside, and it's close." So I go downstairs um, to see Ty. Like, did you hear that? So I go downstairs in the basement. That's where his room was at. So I go downstairs, and I was like, "Ty, did you hear that?" But he wasn't there. His the game was on pause. So I was like, "Where the hell?" Where did he go? So I went up, when I was about to go back upstairs, one of his friends busted in the back door. And and I was like, where's Ty? And I was like, they shooting at Char. And he was like, um, so he, I said, where, where my son? So I was going to the back door and another friend came in and he was like, no, 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 don't go back out there. They still shooting. I was like, no, where's my baby? So when I was going to the door, Ty was coming in. And he was himself, he was all, you know, his demeanor still the same. And he just looked at me and was like, I'm hit. And I was like, you're lying. And I was like, where, where? He was like, my neck. So I was like walking backwards and I was like, call 911. But you know how you just fucking, you panic. So I'm like, what? He had started to call 911 and he just was walking to me. I was walking backwards and he just, um, he got his hand on the, the sink, and he was just like, yep, I'm hit. And I was like, I don't see it. Like, you're lying, I don't see no blood. So he didn't collapse, he just lied down in the um, kitchen floor, like halfway in the living room. The, the guy that was there, he said, Miss Shawana, no, I'm Shawana, I, ain't bring I didn't mean to bring trouble to your home. And, um, so I was like, what happened? So we called 911. And Ty was just totally in there. And Ty just lifted his head up and looked at him. And that's what I saw. So the book. I made it to the hospital. They said he was still in surgery. So I was like, all right. So that was 12. We was at the hospital till like four, four or five. And we was like, I'm like, he's still in surgery, he's still in surgery. So someone came and got me and took me upstairs. They was like, no, 
he didn't make it. He couldn't stop the bleeding. So, yeah. I mean, obviously, the uh, the fresher the case, the higher likelihood of us of us solving it. But I mean, if, if I look back historically in the last couple of years since I've been up there, um, I can't think of a year that's gone by that we haven't closed and we haven't charged on a case that happened a year prior or even two years prior. Uh, I think just actually just this year, I think we charged on a case from 2018. Um, so these cases, they they do not go away. Um, they are never closed out. We are never done examining information or getting you know any tips that come in. We are never done like oh, well, we're not going to follow up on that lead. You know, the case is three, four years old. Um, that's never the case. Um, there's there's no greater you know in my opinion there's no greater feeling than than when we're able to close out a homicide or to you know file the charges on it and most in particular able to contact that victim's family and to let them know. And again, it, it doesn't bring it doesn't bring the deceased back. But for us, it gives us a great deal of pride in knowing that we're able to call the family and provide them, if nothing more than a little bit of uh, closure, for lack of better terms, on um, that case to let them know this is what happened, this is how it happened, why it happened, and this is a person that's going to be held responsible for it happening. Um, so whether it happened a week ago or two, three years ago, again, as in the one that we just uh, charged the other, uh, the other, I think it was a month ago from 2018, um, we, we don't stop looking. We don't stop trying to, to close these cases out and to, uh, to bring the person responsible for this horrific act to justice. After 19 years, it hurts. <laughs> Me personally, I wake up every morning and think about my brother. <laughs> like, why it had to be my brother? <laughs> why couldn't it be somebody else's? Like, why God take the person that I could call, the one that looked out for me? <laughs> the streets ain't it. They don't love you. They forget about you. 19 years later, it used to be all, oh, used to be, rest in peace, know you all, oh, know you this. 19 years later, we stand alone. There's nobody that represents a know you. Pray for 
my city. Won't, won't somebody pray for my city? I'm tired of saying all right.